Shomra Byog. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Michael and Benjamin's podcast. Welcome back to the Digital Tiny Room. I'm the Michael of Michael and Benjamin's podcast, and I am joined this week by the man who hates 2020 just as much as everyone else is Benjamin. Oh, it's such a bloody year, Michael. What what an absolute what an absolute dingbat of a year. One of the worst, Ben. Let's just do the theme music and get this bloody year out of the way. Let's let's bloody do it. <gasps> theme music for the podcast. We don't actually have any theme music. Very good, Benjamin. Benjamin. The very sad and tragic news this week, and let's take it a little bit more seriously than we might yeah. do in most of our introductions, Fair was enough. the the very sudden, the not actually sudden, but the very tragic passing of Chadwick Boseman. Uh, yeah, Mark. the uh, it was a bit of a shock, Michael. I'll be honest. I, I I was I was woken up bed on Saturday morning, yesterday morning, by my good lady friend who said Chadwick Boseman died, and my first reaction was not of shock because I do remember the last few weeks and months of people saying he was appearing very thin and sickly. Oh, I I had no idea of that, Michael. So for me, it was a swift baseball to the side of the head. I was like, oh. Yes, I'm not saying it was a pleasant situation, obviously. No, no, I know. I know. I just, I was not aware that there were any reports that he was sickly or... or, um, Yeah, he he appeared on some Instagram videos over the last couple of months and he was becoming increasingly thin, leading some people to make some jokes. Basically, slightly off-color jokes, Ben. Things like calling him the Crack Panther instead of the Black Panther. Oh. But I think not mean-spirited jokes because everyone assumed that he was doing a role. Yeah, he was shedding some yeah. weight for a role. Yeah, he was doing a McConaughey or a or a Christopher Nolan's... Um, oh what's Christopher Nolan's friend's name? The fellow who's Christian always getting Bale. skinny. Christian Bale. People assumed he was doing that rather than battling... Uh, terminal cancer, which is very bad, very gross, and very bad. I very don't like Im- it, Ben. Very impressive, Michael, that he did it while filming all of his movies. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he was he did... diagnosed in 2016, according to yeah. reports, and continued to make physically taxing films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, in tip-top well, condition, so he made two Avengers films: Civil War, Twenty One Bridges, the one where he was James Brown. He, there was another one, uh, Return of the King, or no, the that's, King. That's that's the Lord of the Rings you're thinking. No, no, been. no, no. There was a a Netflix thing where he played a man trying to find his sister in a sort of Taken style film. I think that was Twenty One Bridges. You're thinking of Ben. You're thinking of the film Twenty One Bridges. No, 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 no. I'm not. But okay, <laughs> okay. No. Anyway, yeah, it but... is a, a bit tragic, Michael. He was also in The Five Bloods there from Spike Lee, which is another Netflix movie. He's excellent in that as well. Yeah, I hadn't seen it, Ben. It, it it does throw back, it it throws some new light on some of the memes. And I think we might have even done it as well, Ben, where we made fun of his Wakanda sometimes or his Wakanda whatever phase. When he, yeah. When he didn't he, appear to you know, have much was a bit drained, but it, it, yeah. oh, it does make you question whether or not that was all just kind of bittersweet for him, which is... Oh, it obviously was, Benjamin. It yeah. obviously was. There's some really, there's some really emotional videos and photos of him doing things like visiting kids in cancer wards as a superhero yeah, while, been, you know, ooh. he was undergoing the treatment himself at the same time. Mentally taxing. Yeah, 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 wow. terrible. And, um, you know, young Ben, very young. 43. Like 43, diagnosed, like, he, he was pretty much my age when he was diagnosed, Ben. So, mm-hmm. you know, the, you're still at the age where you feel young and invulnerable. So everyone look after themselves. Get yourselves yeah. checked. Get checked, Look after lads. your health, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get checked, lads. Get, um, your, get your, get your, keep your health in order and, and look after yourself. Rather interestingly, Michael, he now has the, the top tweet of all time. Yeah, the most liked tweet, which is a weird thing, isn't it? That societally, the, the best praise you can give for horrible news is a like. But yeah, yeah, we the should most... probably address that as a society at some point. <laughs> it is very strange. It's been yeah, messy. The, big, the biggest tweet of all time, Benjamin. Yeah, very sad, very tragic. One of the most tragic ones, Ben. It seems to have left a huge um, impact. It it seems... It, I've never seen... I ha- Well, not in recent memory. I have not seen a reaction like that to a celebrity passing away. Well, there ha- there hasn't been a celebrity death like this in a long time. Someone who was that young, that at the height of their artistic and popular power. Yeah. Uh, he was... 
we we all thought we would be dealing with Chasmith, Chadwick Boseman films for the next 40 years. Yeah, he was going to go the, the full gamut of, yeah, of yeah. careerdom. Yeah, we thought he'd be playing the grumpy old granddad in How I Met Your Mother, the movie 7. In, oh, yeah. In 2042. It's going to be one of the worst films ever made. But um, yeah, very tragic, very, very sad. And, you know, a huge outpouring of grief and support. Yeah, I think oh, yeah. It, uh, while I'm not extremely qualified to speak on this, I'd say the the black community is feeling it rather massively. This is this is a year where the American black community just can't catch a break, even hold on to their their new icons, people that were kind of. Well, you know, Ben, even though he has died, obviously, and he's no longer going to be playing T'Challa, he made a massive impact, though. A massive, massive impact. He's probably made the most impact of any popular culture figure. Yeah, fair. In uh, in in representation, and and you know, Ben, we uh, here at the podcast, we didn't think Black Panther was as good as it uh, as people thought it was. No, perhaps because we, we perhaps because we uh, didn't appreciate quite as much the cultural impact of it. Living well, as we, we, don't. we aren't really not in America. Yeah, yeah, we aren't in that that sphere, so we can't really I'm not in that bubble, Ben. But I mean, the same way. If you want to talk about the impact that a performer can have in society, he's going to be remembered for bloody generations, Benjamin. Yeah, he's going to be one of the the big ones, which is, I suppose, rather fitting. Hmm. Anyway, anyway, Ben, a, let's move on to some happier news. Somber note to start the podcast on. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's talk about much happier news, Ben. Both Tanet and the New Mutants have been released in cinemas. <laughs> yeah, and you and I, Michael, went straight down to our local... Oh, wait, no. No, we didn't. We haven't seen them, Ben. This is, <laughs> this is, this is a grim podcast this week, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Benjamin, I Go think on. it's fair to say, Benjamin, and forgive me for putting words in your mouth. Go on. Other than, you know, every week when I put words in your mouth and say something yeah. horrible about you and your <laughs> attitude to say women or foreign people. Um, but I think what we've done, Ben, if we we have here at the podcast, Michael and Benjamin's podcast, and the Schomer Bug family in general, Ben, we've decided that we're not going to see these films until they're in a scenario where we can see them safely. And not get a COVID. And not get COVID, but not only not dropped something not only not get covered for herself ben but also not kind of be part of the wave of people going back to cinemas when we don't necessarily think it's a great idea yeah i i think we had a discussion during the week michael about <laughs> whether or not we would go to see them and i think we all just kind of opted collectively to be like actually do you know what you know we might just leave it might just might just not we might just not we might just leave it otherwise we could go we could book out a whole cinema ben and we could sit on opposite ends. Yeah, again, Michael, I don't have that kind of bankroll. I know you are rolling in the dough. I'm rolling in this podcast money, Ben. The the, the oodles and oodles of podcast cash that you get solely because I signed a contract at the beginning of this. Foolish. Foolish. I, read the contract, guys. Read always the read the contract. contract. Always read, always read it because you'll end up like Ben. Uh, <laughs> joyless and... <laughs> and joyless and what can I say that's not too mean because we're going oh, for a too not late. too mean tone today <laughs> you just said joyless, joyless and pretty much oh no there's be too a strange husk there's much worse that I'm not saying look I'll, I'll, I'll leave it it's not the, it's not the day it's not the day for it both films Ben are getting middling reviews uh, that doesn't shock me Michael I think the more I've I've learned about Tenet first of all huge yeah. mistake not calling it Tenet yeah 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 second of all it, it looks like Inception 2 and I, I made this two, joke yeah. in our little group as well. Inception 2, but this time it's from the lawkeeper's perspective. Yeah, well, um, I don't know if you want to be promoting a movie where the go- the police are the goodies in America these days anyway. Oh, you probably wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> you probably wouldn't, Ben, because there's a whole movement in America about the police being baddies. And, you know, Ben, I've been looking at it a little bit. You know, I like to stay out of American politics because screw those guys. They're all all over the place anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but they might be right, Ben. What the the anti cop movement? Yeah, yeah. I I would say Michael that they are because I do keep in touch with American politics, and I would say they uh, actually are. Rubbish. You're always on the Reddit, Ben. I, no, I think they're the left, Ben. The, uh, <laughs> I see what I've done. I've done a little joke for you there, Ben. I've done a little joke for you. I mean, it's going to be interesting in the next couple of years, Michael. 
uh, because so much of reality television in the United States was made up of programs where you watched it from a police officer's perspective and things like that. And I don't see how those shows are true, true, tenable. True, 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 true. More, more than that, Michael, it's been spoken yeah. about by some people. Uh, for example. Yeah. For example. Go on. The cast of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Michael, is very unsure of whether or not their future will go ahead. Because yeah, yeah. it is, quite frankly, a fantasy at this point to imagine that the NYPD could operate with that kind of levity and harmony and you know any kind of of balance when we've kind of seen that that's not the case in most states uh, well, uh, well i don't know if that's true either cuz again i don't keep track of it but benjamin it is like uh it, it it you know society keeps changing ben but there was a shift in american society there post 911 basically oh, oh yeah which uh, which shifted towards the the cop and the FBI agent and that we've talked about this in this podcast before, but the 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 system the man being the goody being the protagonist. Yeah. Whereas if you look back on early nineties uh, and eighties and nineties TV, it was always the renegade rebel, not law following person who was the hero. True. And then you got your waves of CSIs and every show became a cop show. Even look Ben at. Joss Whedon's Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Mm -hmm. where she very often comes into conflict with the police and the army and stuff who were also trying to investigate supernatural goings on. Because you would. Because you would, of course. And then Joss Whedon's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is about a shadowy government agency, but for some reason they're the good guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But now the shift is going back towards the the man is bad. I mean, if you reframe S.H.I.E.L.D., that's a a weird thing. S.H.I.E.L.D.'s a a weird weird thing. It is a bit weird. It's it's like having a sitcom about the Nazis, but from the Nazi perspective. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be like a sitcom about those fun-loving SS. Something like uh, Good Times. Yeah, Guten Times it would be called. Um, yeah, it's a bit odd. But Ben, if you think about it, the the people protesting now currently, like the it's the young that drive protests, and they were yes. all born post 9-11. Or, or uh, yeah. in around it, like, too young to really be affected by it. I think... Yes, Ben? This this is a hot take, Michael, so yeah, feel on, free to edit all of this out. Gonna... But I, I oh, no. feel... Oh, this is going to be controversial. No, 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 no. Not, like, not that bad. Not Well, maybe. I don't know. All right, go on. I feel like 9-11 was such a jarring occurrence in kind of world history that it might have stopped the the level of awareness that we have for police misconduct or I don't, I don't think it stopped it I think it caused it oh you think it's the opposite oh uh, yeah I think 9-11 is what caused the militarization of American police because Irish police aren't going around shooting people in the back nope and Seven banging times. on shields yeah and banging on shields and corralling people and tear gassing them and uh, that doesn't happen nope so it's it's the it's the militarization of American society which has been caused probably mostly by nine eleven. Anyway, Ben, that's entirely irrelevant. Michael, what is this episode of Michael and Benjamin's podcast? It's about um it's about bloody Ben, it's about militarization of the public. What the fuck? One of my favorite um one of my favorite stories, Ben, is from Warhammer forty thousand, and it's a planet called Cadia. Yeah. And C- Cadia is the last stronghold of humanity at the Eye of Terror. Ooh. And it's basically a fortress planet, Ben, because it's the last line of defense for the forces of chaos and madness entering into real space. Okay. And it has an entirely, entirely militarized populace. Okay. E- every citizen of, of Cadia is a soldier. Okay. And their entire society revolves around that. And there are loads of things about the society that are kind of reflection of the fact that everyone's a soldier. Like, all fashion is military fatigue-style fashion. Ooh, nice. Yeah, which makes sense, because, you know, the things we wear are workwear that becomes fashionable. Jeans, Ben, were for bloody... were workwear. And now everyone wears them. Exactly. Miners and horse riders and stuff. With an E, not children. Oh, Miners yeah, with not an mi- E, not J. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's why I like uh, Cadia, because it's an entirely militarized planet. 
And America is a little bit like that sometimes, isn't it? Ooh, so ta- take that <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> what are we talking about this week? You're going to have to edit that bit. <laughs> I, I, I will not. Bloody raging hot take there. Uh, Michael, speaking yeah. of complete racial injustice and intolerant police in America, <clears throat> oh, the second good. episode of Lovecraft Country came out this week. Very good, Ben. Ben, I saw this episode. I thought that this series was going to be an entire series covering one of the stories from the book. And I thought that those Braithwaite... Uh, spoilers here. Spoilers coming for episode two of Lovecraft Country. I thought that those Braithwaite fellows were going to be... I thought that was going to be the crux of the entire season. Main antagonistos. But, holy God, did that episode move quickly. It's good. It's good. It's exactly the way it works out in the book, Michael. Uh has any? If you haven't seen it, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do a mild. We do a mild spoilers, or we do a. We little are brief? doing some. No, we are doing some spoilers. But okay. let's give a little break. Do a little break for Lovecraft Country spoilers. Spoilers in Lovecraft All right, here we Country. Go. Spoilers in Lovecraft Country. Stay away if you don't want to get eaten by weird vampire alien things. Spoilers. Very good. So that's what we're using for the Lovecraft Country spoilers today, Michael Benjamin. White people are awful. Yes, a lot of the people in that town were not very good. Yeah, they weren't great lads. They weren't great lads. Some interesting changes from the book this week, Michael. <clears throat> yeah, go on. Uh, first of all, uh, Christina. Yeah. Uh, first of all, yes, please. Uh, well done mm-hmm. to her. Mm-hmm. Good Hello, job. Attractive lady. Uh, second of all, the internet lost its minds again, Michael, because the main antagonist in the book is the son. Of, not the daughter. Uh, the thing, And they've changed her into a daughter. And, ooh, Michael. Oh, yes. Michael. Yes, Benjamin. People are a simmer. They're like, oh, this is, this is bullshit. This is whitewashing. This is... It makes no difference. Both of them no. are mistreated characters. Both of them are ignored by their father. In fact, Michael, yes. I dare say making her a woman in her father's patriarchal uh, secret society makes her a stronger character with better motivations. Mm, I see. That's what I'd say, Michael. Michael, yeah, yeah, we yeah. saw some monsters again. Yeah, I like seeing them. Some burrowy monstery boys. Yeah, get rid of them though. They're no use. No use. We saw a racist old sheriff again. Yeah. Except this time it was a lady. She got an L smack from the ever attractive Journey Smollett. Yeah, that's it. That's her name. No, that's it. That's it. She's not married to that guy anymore. Oh, never mind. Journey Smollett it is. So, Michael, the acting has stayed on point. Uh, it's it's bizarre, Ben. It's such a bizarre show. It's so good, though, Michael. It's it all happened so quickly. The characterization is amazing. I think there are such interesting small changes that they make that make everything better. For example, there's the little bit of paranoia at the beginning between George and Letitia, where they think poor El Atticus has lost his mind, but Atticus is special. That's why the magic doesn't work on him. Oh, yeah, it doesn't Michael, work. Very good, very good. So they lose their memory. And they yeah, don't remember yeah. the the children of the night. That's what I'm going to call them because that's what George right. calls them in episode one. Okay. They don't remember the children of the night assault. And I mean, oh, it just makes for such an interesting tension at the beginning, Michael. And there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of oh, maybe he's a bit shell shocked from his time over in Korea. Oh, yeah, yeah. maybe it's that. And it's it's all character building, Michael. Little breadcrumbs of character building. Little mm, breadcrumbs mm, of mm. of oh, how do these people think? What, what, where are they going? And we finally yeah. meet his dad and it's bloody Omar from The Wire. It's Omar. And he was under the ground. They buried him. Another excellent change from the book, Michael. Um, he stays underground the entire time in the book. In this, he's given a lot of agency. He makes his own run for it. He tries to, to have an escape. Yeah, he gets out. He gets out from under there and is like, I don't want to be under there anymore. And then, Michael, there's some serious, uh, excellent playing around there at the end where we find out that, well, maybe, maybe bloody Omar isn't his dad. Maybe oh, yeah. Maybe we haven't been telling folks. Is that is that from the book, stuff. Ben? Uh, no, it's not. The, none of that is there. Michael, the horror element in this show has been cranked up to 11. Go on. There is nowhere near as much psychological torture, uh, body horror, anything like this, doesn't come into the book in the same way. The focus of the book is very much society is the villain, monsters are a byproduct. In this... Yes. First of all, watch your back around white folk. But second of all, oh, watch your bloody back around these forests at night because uh, bloody monsters. Yeah, there's monsters everywhere. And there's a lot of that going on. But Michael, for example, we, we come across, we are introduced to the character of Mr. Bright White, whose name I can't remember, the father. Uh, probably something old and racist like Caleb. 
Caleb was the son's name actually in the book, which is excellent. Well done. Oh, thank you. Uh, but yeah, we'll call him Caleb Senior for this one because I can't remember his name. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Oh, it's Samuel Braithwaite. Never mind. I remembered his name. Samuel Braithwaite is introduced, and he's having his bloody. Uh, is it a liver? A bit of it looks like a bit of his liver. Yeah, they're it looks having like a bit of his liver removed, and he feeds it to his guests because he's a bloody creep. And uh, actually, one of the few contradictions that I found was uh, when he said, "My my adherence to the old ways is limited to them believing in it." So mm. why did you take out your liver? Why did you not just? Serve them normal liver and say, yeah, it's my liver. Just go, go on. Gross Have a bit, bit of that. But anyway, gross bit of liver. we're introduced to him in a horrific way, Michael, where he's having his liver removed and we get to see it all. Yeah, I'm against it. I think you should keep your liver inside. I think it's probably supposed to go in there, mm, right? Mm, 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 yeah. Further to that, Michael, the bloody torture scenes in the rooms, Michael, where, they, where they're forced to encounter people from their past and their fantasies and, oh. Yeah, no good. Oh, Michael, such tension. Such tension. I'm looking forward to more Atticus revelations. There is nothing in the book about Atticus's time in Korea, and it looks like the series certainly intends to lean into that an awful lot more. Well, it looks like he killed that lady. He did kill that lady, but she wasn't real, Michael. No, but it looks like he probably killed her in Korea, and now he's guilty about well, he probably, it. He probably did. Michael. He probably has post traumatic stress. Remember the phone or... call at the beginning? Oh, yeah. The phone call in, in episode one. Yeah, but maybe she's now a long distance call to Korea. Maybe she was a ghost, Ben. Yes, I think it's his long lost lady love. Yeah, but I think he killed her. He probably he probably did. I think he probably killed, had to. Yeah, he probably had to kill his long lost lady love. Is probably something like that. Oh, well, it's not great. It's gonna be interesting. Michael, what do you think of those last few minutes? Ooh, They're very dramatic, Ben. I thought the whole. I, I, like I said, I was sitting there in shock the whole time, going, "This is happening too quickly for me." Everybody, calm down. <laughs> Everybody, stop it. Yeah, because you you kind of get used to the slow burn of of a HBO show. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like that, being drip fed your little yeah yeah little nuggets. nuggets but no nuggets in this it's just full turds but in a positive Jesus. way in a positive way Jesus. there's one big good turds golden yeah. turds one big poop. golden turds for everyone yeah yeah no good what good show good show Ben episode, Michael. good show I enjoyed it and next week looks like it's going to be an entirely new story about some other problem yeah I'm looking forward to it I can't wait to see it yes, very can't good. wait to see it I think it's going to be very interesting yes Benjamin I tell you what I did watch this week go on. I watched, I've, as you know, I'm rewatching Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. And oh, yes, you are. I rewatched the episode of Angel called Sonam, Sonam, Sonambul, oh Christ, Somnambulist, Sonambul, which is Sleepwalker. It's a sleepwalker. It's the one where Angel thinks he's having sleepwalking dreams and killing people, but it turns out to be a vampire that he sired many years ago. Now, sired vamp. Uh, exactly, and the sired vamp is a like he's a younger, impressionable guy who Angel took under his wing and made a vampire. And now he's a psychotic killer. But guess who it was? Go on. It was TV and cinema's Jeremy Renner. <laughs> Fuck off. Jeremy Renner was the villain in an episode of Angel. I had no idea. Oh, Jeremy Renner, what an interesting man. He's fascinating. And he's doing a... a he's doing a, I don't know if he's being Irish or English or... But he's doing oh, a voice God. as well. It's absolutely brilliant. Did you know that Jeremy Renner had his own app for a while? Yes. Well, it wasn't his own app. It was a different. It was an app like it was like an OnlyFans thing, but specifically for Jeremy Renner. Specifically for Jeremy Renner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying I and signed he had up to close it down because obviously it's just a terrible because of the mockery. Yeah, the mockery. Bloody Michael. Yes. I was sitting there. What were you doing? Scratching my head. Yeah. Saying. Hmm. Yes. What we talk about this week, what we Michael? This week? What we talk about this week? And right as I was scratching my head, Michael, I walked past my my old family televisual room. Yeah. And my sister was flicking through, and the Discovery fa- Channel flashed up for half a second. Yeah. And who was bloody there, Michael? Um, Dog the Bounty Hunter. David Attenborough. And I went, oh, bounty hunters are mad popular, aren't they? Oh, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Let's probably talk about them. All right, let's do it then. Um, Ben, what's Bounty Hunter? So, bounty hunting, Michael, uh, as as a profession yeah. in the real world, yeah. is whereupon somebody, yeah. somewhere, yeah. has skipped out on their bail. Mm. And bail, Michael, is the the court amount set for an accused person's freedom from prison. However, it does not excuse them from which which part does it miss? I always what they have to go to court, Ben. They have to go to court, yeah. but basically you set bail, mm-hmm. and bail means that you don't have to spend the night in jail. Yeah. It's bail or jail. The higher the bail, the greater the risk you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Other way lots around. Of people, yes. Lots of people yeah. 
go on and they get their bail and then they try to do an old run route. They do a legger bin. And when that happens, Michael, the court's like, oh, tits. Send a cowboy right. after them. We'll have to get them back. So let's get an outlaw to do it. Except they're not really outlaws in real life, Michael. They're court appointed officials with licenses and other such things. Mm. And they go after them. And the big difference between today and way back then, Michael, is you got to bring them in alive. Yeah. Way back then was better. You could just shoot them. Yeah. So it's it's a, a mostly Western uh, invention, Michael, from, from, the, from the Western era of frontier countrydom. Mm. When America was being built... On the backs of various immigrants. Basically pretty lawless towns. So what you do is you commit a crime in one tiny little Hopoke town. And then you'd uh, jump on over there to the next one. And they'd be like, oh, how do we catch this guy? We'll never get, get him. Bounty hunter. We'll never get him. We'll never get him. Because law, sheriffs used to just look after one little town, Michael. There was no such thing as the state border patrol. Yeah. There was no such thing as the bloody US marshals. I think, no such thing I think there was, as Tommy ben. Lee Jones saying, I don't care. Yeah, there, I think there was. Because often in those movies, Ben, it's the US marshals who show up and say, we're taking over this operation. We're the US yeah, marshals. True, we're the Texas that's Rangers. Pretty that's pretty true. Yeah. And then bloody Chuck Norris takes your case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway Michael it, it's become kind of I suppose a fantasy for a lot of people because the, the glorification of the old west uh, took place on the silver screen yeah and bounty hunters oscillate between two very key tropes and one is the heart of gold trope yeah where it's just a man a working stiff yeah trying to make ends meet trying to get out there do a bit of good yeah yeah and we'll usually do the right thing when push comes to shove. And then the other side of that trope is the rat bastard. Yeah, yeah. Who's just a merciless prick who enjoys hurting people and happens to get paid. Exactly. Benjamin. So, th- yeah. Have you ever played the Star Wars The Old Republic online video game? I think you know I haven't. You haven't, Benjamin. You've got no dexterity. Well, Ben, when it first was released in 2000... Oh, this was a long time ago. Let's say 2010. Was it, Ben? Go on. Anyway, when it was first released... Look it up. What's you, it called? Star Wars The Old Republic. It's an online MMO multiplayer online game. 2008. Go Bloody on. hell. Anyway, Ben, uh, when it first released, Ben, w- one of the options you had as a character to play was a bounty hunter. Bounty hunter. And, yeah, and Benjamin, as you know, no great Star Wars fan am I. No. But I am quite a big fan of uh, online MMO role-playing games. So You are. And this was the latest one, the biggest one to hit the scene. It was very exciting when it was released. Like most Ooh, others, Ben, it, it never really lived up to its potential. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. That's a story for another day. Benjamin, the first character I created was a bounty hunter. Of course it was, Michael, because yeah. secretly, yes. you've only ever wanted to be a bounty That's all hunter. I've ever wanted to do, Ben, was get people and bring them into justice. But, Ben, the worst thing about this bloody game, it's, it's, a, it's a bloody moral choice game. There's lots of moral choices Ugh. in it. Because it was uh, it was made by Bioware, Ben, who you'll remember, Ben, from Mass Effect, for example. Yes, my favorite game series yeah, yeah. of all time. Michael. Yeah, 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 you love it. So, Benjamin, I thought I'll be a bounty hunter and I'll go in and I'll bring down the criminals and the scum of the universe and I'll capture them and bring them back and get money. And then the first quest is like, OK, you have to go and get this guy. And I was like, yeah, I'll go get him. I'll go get him. I'll give you my grappling hook. And my uh, backpack. I don't have a backpack yet. Damn it. I'll use my uh, flamethrower. I might not use my flamethrower. I'll go over and I'll talk to him. And I'll decide what to do. And then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Bounty Hunter. I only stole that bread because the Empire killed all my children. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, but grappling hook. <laughs> no, I didn't grappling hook him. I, I, don't, I don't think it was possible to get fired from being a bounty hunter in the game The Old Republic, but I should have been, Ben, because I kept letting everyone go, because everyone uh, kept no telling good, Michael. they kept giving no me good. sob You're stories. the heart of gold, bounty hunter. Yeah, but you can't make any bloody money doing that, Ben. No. Yeah. You're a hog bounty hunter. So, hog the bounty hunter. Benjamin, when... Uh, oh, that's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 very good. That's very good. Heart of gold, the bounty hunter. Yeah, hog the bounty good. hunter. Oh, Michael, well done. Thank you very much. Benjamin... What I'm saying is, uh, bounty hunting is all well and good when you're living in a lovely fictional world where all of the villains are just cardboard villains. But uh, yeah, but what happens, Michael, in the real world? In the, in the, or even not in the real world, in the world of Star Wars, Ben. The person you're often sent to get turns out to be the goody. Yeah. And then you're the baddie. Uh, Boba Fett is not a good dude. No, he's a real son of a bitch. 
He's a real son of a bitch. People seem to like him because of one scene with a sarlacc pit. But he's a real son of a bitch. Benjamin, there's one reason people like Boba Fett. Or if you're American, Boba Fett. And there's one reason alone. And that is that he is a cool looking space Spartan with a jetpack. He is cool looking. That's the only reason. That's the reason, Ben. Very cool looking. In fact, somebody made an entire series based on that costume alone. (laughs) Have you seen The Mandalorian, Ben? I have. The Mandalorian, Ben, exists to be a cool looking space Spartan with a jump pack. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, all you need. That's all you need. All you in really the old need, west. Yeah, as I said, it's become a real fantasy for people, especially Michael. Yeah. In my newfound favorite term, speculative fiction. Oh yes. A ridiculous way of saying sci-fi. Um, that's what uh, that's what authors call science fiction. Then. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, anyway, in in the L spec fic. I think Margaret Atwell calls it that, doesn't she? She probably does. Yeah. yeah. Margaret Atwell. Uh, Atwood. Bit of, bit of Atwell snow. or Atwood? Which one? I can't remember. I think you're thinking of Haley Atwell. I probably was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so anyway, Jesus. Margaret Atwood. Uh, Margaret Atwood <laughs> has a lot it. of issues with being called any kind of fiction uh, author. Yeah, yeah, no. And I find it very funny for someone who has made such a lucrative career out of writing fiction to be like, well, well, let's not call it. Let's not call it sci-fi. Let's not call it. Let's not cheapen it by calling it fantasy. And it's like you're pissing on a lot of cor- p- colleagues' cornflakes. Like there's no need. All right. Anyway, go on. What were you saying? Anyway, this isn't what we're talking about. Michael, what is today's episode? I don't know, Ben. Look, it's been a trying week. It has. Anyway, Michael, what I wanted to say was it's become kind of a massive fantasy for speculative fiction, especially of the scientific fiction genre. Go on. on. Because space and westerns, we, boy, oh, are they a match made in heaven? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're on another planet. What does it look like, bloody that desert? Yeah, America. We're on another planet. What does it look like, bloody that forest? The Old West. The Old West. Every single f- thing is Old West. Firefly was all Old West. Bloody Mandalorian was all Old West. Most of the Killjoy scenarios from the sci-fi channel Killjoys Oh, that's what to be I was going to talk West. about. <laughs> um, the Expanse is Old West meets Gritty Noir on a space station, mm-hmm. Old West. Yeah, yeah. And Bounty Hunters play a role in every last one of those series. Mm. Some of the times that the the hog bounty hunters, and some of the times that the rat bounty hunters. It depends yeah, yeah, yeah. on which kind of character you're rooting for at which time. Mm. It really depends, Michael. Mm. So why don't you tell me a little bit about bloody Killjoys? Killjoys, Ben, is brilliant. I've, have we talked about Killjoys before on this show? We've touched upon it, Michael. We've touched upon it, Ben. It's it's a Canadian American production, and and by golly gosh, is it cheap? It's a cheap Canadian American <laughs> co production. It's like um, yeah. it's like if. Uh, if what's it called Firefly hadn't quite had the artistic vision that it had and goes a little <laughs> bit off the rails and becomes this mad sure. thing about alien space goop and clones and time travel and everything but it starts Ben as a story about bounty hunters legalized bounty hunters I can't remember what they're called they're not called bounty hunters oh they're called killjoys <laughs> What a dumbass! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it's it's basically yeah, but it, it is the classic Ben. We have to go and do this job, and then they go, and the person that they've been sent there to get turns out to be good, and they have to, and they have to help the person, and then they don't get the bounty. And you're like, how do these people have any money? All they the- don't, Michael. But but science uh, fiction prevails, Michael, and they have a couple of shekels every time. Well, all of the um, basically all of the. All of the baddies that they capture, which are just straightforward, boring. Oh, this guy's just a baddie, and we got him. Like he, and they bring him back. That all happens off screen. That's how every episode starts. They're hauling. Oh, yeah, they walk in and we're like, "That was a tough one." Yeah, but that was a tough one, and that was not morally ambiguous in any way, and nothing to far further the larger plot happened. So let's go have a drink together. Oh, we did a quick bounty. Yeah, Job but, done. <laughs> but then it becomes this mad space epic about alien space goo, and it's really oh yeah, it it goes way off the rails, and there's clones, and oh, it's mental. It's absolutely in a good way or a bad way. I I honestly can't tell you, Ben. I watched it all, and I thoroughly <laughs> enjoyed it, but I don't know if it was good. <laughs> Those are the best shows. It though, is in enormously fairness. cheap. It's one of the cheapest looking shows that managed to get five seasons I've ever seen. Every spaceship is obviously played by an office building the in in this particular future the inside of spaceships look like office buildings handy 
Yeah, no, it's very cheap. Very cheap and convenient. Very cheap and convenient. And like super air, nice. And airlocks are like sliding doors on a on a shopping center. It's it's quite hilarious. But yeah, good. Um, I like the bounty hunting universe. It has all the classics, Ben. You need in a bounty hunting universe. It has a like a a bounty hunting guild. Oh yeah, guild that you can't go against. And you need you to do, exactly oh. yeah, and you need to become a member. And there's ranks. Oh, everybody loves ranks, Ben. I'm a level seven bounty hunter. What's your bounty hunting level? I'd imagine I'd probably be a level one. No, that's too high, Ben. It's high. That's oh, that's sorry, it's the other way around. I'd real. imagine I'd be a level negative twenty-eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd be, no, that's even higher. Yeah, I know. That's why oh, I, I see what you're doing. I'm great. Um, yeah. uh, no, I'd probably be. I'd probably be somewhere around Michael thirty-two to fifty-eight. Yeah, they barely let you in, Ben. You'd have. To, I don't. All your bounties would escape. I don't think they would, Michael. I think I'd be brought in to bust the tables. They have Sean and Aaron Ash. Sean, Sean or Aaron Ashmore. In it, one of the Ashmore, one of the Ashmore brothers, and An Ashmore. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I, I like it, but it's is it good? Probably not. But it, yeah. oh <laughs> but yeah, it's so, nice that it's... so yeah, they have the guild. They have the bounty hunting guild. They have like a a grumpy older lady who's their the one they go to to get their tokens, and they're like, "We need this job," and she's like, "You're not ready for that job, you son of a bitch." And they're like, "We are ready. We'll take it." And the last time I gave you a job like this, the bounty did it, convinced you to let him go, and they're like. Oh, just give me the one off the books. It's all your classic bounty hunting tropes, Ben. I can't do it. I can't do it. You've you've messed up too many jobs. Come on, I need this. Yeah, the, the pilot. Uh, the pilot episode is when they get a bounty on the main character's brother, Ben. Do you think they dun, bring him in? Do dun, they? Heck, Ben. Dun, of course not. Why would you bring in your own brother? Doesn't yeah, make yeah. any sense. When he could become a cast member. It's also a clear, yes. clear conflict of interest. And no bounty hunter token giver in their right mind would be like, yeah. Well, they didn't know, the Ben. They didn't know. Oh, okay. It was a mystery bounty. Mm. And uh, nobody knew. Yeah, he was a cage fighter. Okay, fair enough. I mean, we've seen it time and time again, Michael. As you said, Firefly is probably a good example where it, we don't necessarily... We have a very different type of, of bounty hunter in Firefly, Michael. Two, two very odd ones. Mm. Go we on. have... Bloody uh, Honey Trap Bounty Hunter Played by Miss Christina Hendricks Who Is she a bounty poses hunter? As a, she, yeah she, she's trying to I thought she was just in. a common or garden thief Oh was, that, was she a thief? I thought she was Oh have I gotten this wrong? I thought she was a bounty hunter I thought she was just oh, a no. thief What's her character's oh, no. name again? She's just an old thief I don't know I don't I She's I've, she's always Christina Hendricks to me. It's just the most convenient <laughs> way for me to reference her. Uh, but the other one, since I've probably mussed that one up, the other one, Michael, was the strange uh, philosophy quoting Mad Men, where they have the, the bottle episode, where they're in the ship for the Go whole on. episode. And he kind of infiltrates the ship in his red leather suit. Mm. And he kind of wanders around hunting down different members of the, the crew. It's bizarre. Very successful. kind of quotes philosophy yeah no he's excellent one of my favorite things about that michael what one of my favorite things is when the bounty hunter is kind of an unstoppable force michael yes i enjoy that where they've earned their reputation as a rather fearsome fuck Mm. like for example in that none of the crew are able to (laughs) to kind of stick up against him he just kind of wipes the floor with them that's just pretty common in joss whedon stuff is it? Yeah, he loves bringing in an all-powerful character who they and then like splatting his main characters against them. Oh, that's he did it. He did it in. I know. I keep talking about Buffy, and it's going to bore everyone. But he did it in season seven of Buffy with uh, Mal Reynolds himself. With uh, what's that guy's name? <laughs> I'm so bad at Nathan names Fillion. today. With Nathan Fillion himself. Yeah, he he was brought in as a nearly unbeatable character who all of the main characters embarrassingly lose to as well. If you'd like to hear more about Michael's thoughts on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you can listen to our new podcast, Slay Queen. Oh, very good, yes. Uh, yes. Which is uh, all about Michael and uh, his love of, of Buffy the Vampire I Slayer do love and Buffy Sarah the Michelle Geller in general. No, well, no, I, I would, wouldn't agree with that now necessarily. I think she's... Too late. All right. Well, look, you've tarred me with... You've put words in my mouth. Now I know what it's like. Put words in your mouth. Oh, how the turns have tabled. Chris, Christina so, Hendricks played Saffron, Ben, and she was just a con artist. She wasn't a bounty hunter. Just a con artist. Well, that's no good for my point, That's no good for your point. No, but uh, moving on from the unstoppable bounty hunting trope, one of my favorite bounty hunting scenes of comic book uh, origin yeah. in the last couple of years has been the young outsider scene where Lobo turns up. Go on. And he's, he's hunting Forager, who's a member of the... The 
outsiders or the Young Justice, sorry, who's a member of Young Justice. I think we've talked. And about he turns this. up and he just wipes the floor with every last one of them. The only way the Forager survives is by shedding his exoskeleton because he's a little bug person. Yeah, he's Michael. a little bug man. And he puts himself into a ball and Lobo mistakes that for his body. And he done squishes the ball and he thinks he's fulfilled the fulfilled the contract. In fairness, Michael, pretty poor due diligence there yeah. on Lobo's part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's a rough and tough mercenary who's a big hairy biker that, that lives out in space. So, I mean, it may be. Maybe. But you just get to watch them all try every possible strategy. Let's try a bit of teamwork. Mm-hmm. Ooh, let's try swapping partners and a little bit of different teamwork. Ooh, let's call in the cavalry. Ooh, let's uh, use that power that nobody should use because it's really dangerous. And none of it works, Michael. No, he just beats them all. None off. of it works. He laughs it all off. Because Lobo is a man who goes toe-to-toe with Superman on the reg. Tell us about He's who Lobo just, is, like, ben. One of the most famous Lobo is the, the big Zar- the Zarnian. The Zarnian. C Z A R N I A N Zarnian. He's the last of the Zarnian race in the DC comics. He's kind of like Superman if he was left in space and abused. <laughs> um, he's a big scary guy. He's got big regenerative powers. Red eyes. You've seen him, Michael. He was designed primarily as a piss take of the Wolverine. Mm, he's Irish, isn't he? He's not Irish, uh, but in the recent Krypton series, he was played by Emmett Scanlon and is very, very, very Irish. Uh, L- Lobo is super Irish. Oh, I'm a mercenary. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get you. I'm going to bring you back in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm bringing you back in. Yeah. I'm gonna get that I don't know bend. why every kind of pop culture person is Nidge from Love Hate to Me, but every single Irish person on screen is just Nidge. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. He does a really bizarre job of that character, but he's a great character. He kind of goes through. Oh, it's a real emotional roller coaster. He was designed as kind of a heavy render icon in the late eighties, but he was debuted a lot earlier than that. But he, sorry, he was redesigned in the eighties. He he debuted a lot earlier than that as a bounty hunter, and he wasn't a biker at all. He was just a pale white guy with white eyes, big spiky hair, and he wore a multicolored jumpsuit, mm, as most bounty hunters so, do, I believe. He then, yes, probably. Uh, and then he got a big redesign in the 1990s, or sorry, the late 1980s, and became kind of a parody for Wolverine. And uh, to the credit of uh, whoever designed him, Stan Lee said if he could ever have designed one DC character, he would have designed Lobo. He said yeah, it was one of his he's, favorites. He's cool looking. He's very cool looking. He's got he's a big, big hook on a chain. Ass. He carries a big, a big meat hook. Yeah, he's got a big hook on a chain, and he's Irish. Great. Um, so he's unstoppable, and I quite enjoy that trope as we go along. But Michael, yes, you and I put this out to the listeners as oh, well. Oh, the listeners, they're a bunch of good eggs. But just a great bunch of lads. Grand bunch of lads. Grand bunch of lads. I'm going to read out some of them here, Michael. All right, you do that. That's what we do here at the podcast. So, mm-hmm. good friend of the podcast, Nine Wassies, mentioned yeah. one of your favorite series, Michael. Oh, Killjoys. Uh, he, apart from Killjoys he went for something a little different Michael something a little different he said Johnny Alpha of Stronium Dogs right which is one of yours isn't it no never read it oh never mind then oh what <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> one of your um, you meta baron things damn no, no, it no. never read it damn it he also meant <laughs> damn it he also meant the saint of killers uh, who came from the who came from the Preacher comic, which is pretty interesting. Gareth Ennis kind of made his attempt at building a mythology or a religion yeah. for mercenaries, hired guns, murderers, anything you like. Anybody that spilled human blood and it ended in L death, mm-hmm. the Saint of Killers was there. And the Saint of Killers was literally born out of the Old West. He was a man filled with more hate than any other man on the planet. More hate yeah. than any other creature on the universe right in the universe yeah, not yeah. on the universe it's not flat astride you know. astride the universe astride the universe and the saint of killers was then locked away by God because he was so filled with hate and uh, God was afraid because he had a special gun you see Michael what could it do and they were the guns of death and if you were fired upon by the guns of death that was it baby game over what even that? if you were God that was in Supernatural so God locked him away made a deal 
locked him away. Mm. And then he gets out, Michael, oh. over the course of, of the Preacher series. And, oh, it's great when he turns up. He's just a relentless walking badass. Isn't he Clint Eastwood? He's kind of based roughly on Clint Eastwood and different things. Um, that brings us to good friend of the podcast, Shane. Yes. Uh, who said, William Money in, Unforgi- uh, in Unforgiven. He likes a Western. Uh, all Shane. seven in the it's a It's a Western. Mm. So that's where a lot of that comes from. William Money is the character that Clint Eastwood plays. Uh, he's a real son of a bitch mm. in, in Unforgiven. And then he told us, what about Riddick? What about Riddick, lads? Mm. And it's true. In the first Chronicle, Riddick's nail pitch black. Yes. Uh, we get to see a, a ragtag group of mercenaries try to bring him in. Yeah, that, that doesn't go well, though, does it? Doesn't go too well. They and get... then it was so, so much fun the first time, Michael, that they completely redid that entire movie in the third one. Yeah, after the They're second like, Let's one. Let's bring it back to another planet yeah. with weird creatures that are hard to beat. Yeah, after and the second try one. Try and do it all over again. After the second one being an entirely weird space opera epic thing. Wanting to be a weird H.R. Geiger Dune hybrid yeah, thing. Yeah, weird, 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 weird series. Weird, weird, series. weird, weird times. Weird, yeah. weird times. Then Infinity Action Figure Art yeah. got in touch with us and he said Anton Chigger, who, to my mind, Michael, is probably the finest example of a rat bastard uh, bounty hunter that I've ever come across. He is the Saint of Killers, isn't he, Ben? He is, yeah. Well, that's essentially what he is, Michael. In fact, really should have been Javier Bardem now that I think about it because those two are very similar to the comic book depiction not who, necessarily the who plays the Saint thing. of Killers in the TV show of Preacher uh, I'm not sure Michael. I don't think it's anyone famous Michael I think they got a, a they? relatively unknown gentleman okay let me let me check that out no I'll check it out uh, while you so keep we got, reading the, the listeners we got that one as well Michael and uh, yeah Javier Bardem was kind of an excellent neo-noir western neo-western Probably the better term for it. A neo-Western version of the bounty hunter or simply the physical embodiment of consequences. That's what he is. Mm. He just never stops. Um, one of my favorite things about the uh, the Anton Chigger character, both in the book No Country for Old Men by Cormac McCarthy and the movie No Country for Old Men, directed and adapted by the Coen brothers, is that his bounty hunter is kind of seen as a, a course of evolution. Right. It's kind of the more amoral society has become, the more amoral the consequences have become. And Anton Chigurh is, in every sense, amoral. He makes decisions based on a coin flip or a coin toss, as he would put it. It's a pretty interesting concept. And a lot of the old kind of forces of good and law enforcement, they don't know what to be doing anymore, Michael, because guess what? It's no country for old men. Mm. So... He's kind of an interesting evolution of what society needs. And then, of course, Michael, we had several people get in touch with us and tell us all about how they loved The Mandalorian. And IG-88 from, I'm going to get this right, Jaden Kendam, he got in touch with us as well. And he said, IG-88. And Michael, I never understood the droid fetish that Star Wars people have until I saw the IG unit in The Mandalorian. The movement, the choreographing, the fun play of the the mechanics that he has as a robot, great, great bloody yeah, yeah, stuff. Yeah, um, yeah Just brilliant, an enjoyable watch all round. And funnily enough, IG eighty eight from the original movie is even less uh, impactful than Boba Fett. He just stands there and looks cool. But then the that's whole what they do Michael. That's what they do. That's all they do. But then the whole extended universe builds out around him and then he ends up getting much more... Well, he gets more fleshed out in the comics, Ben, and the novels and stuff, but then finally gets his kind of big screen moment to shine, but not IG-88, uh, Taika Waititi-88. Go on. In the Mandalorian. In the Mandalorian. Because it's not IG-88. It's, a, it's an IG unit. It's not the same one. It's an IG unit. Yeah, they don't special. So IG-88 is a specific mm. unit. Oh, that's good to know, Michael. That's good to know. Mm. I didn't know that Mm. and now I do Michael it's such an interesting trope I think for a lot of people they end up being people's favourite characters because they have that little bit of moral flexibility Benjamin Um, you forgot to mention that Kron sent in one as well oh sorry yep absolutely Uh, Kron sent in two two oh Oh. Um, Kron sent in one which was uh, of course the wonderful Agent 47 more of a mercenary assassin type but you know I'm sure there's bounties involved Sometimes. Sometimes. And then the other one that we got, Michael, which is a really interesting one and a parody of all Bounty Hunters, was sent in by Kron's good lady friend. Oh, go on. And that is Overkill from The Tick. Overkill is Kron's lady friend. Overkill is, is quite Kron's the reveal. 
That is a surprise. Uh, that is a surprising turn of events, I have to say. Damn cleft sentences. I'm so sorry to both Kron and his good lady friend. What I meant to say was, Kron's good lady friend yeah. sent us in a suggestion, yes. which was Overkill from the 2015-2016 series on Amazon Prime. That's a much more boring way of putting it, Ben. I, I like the it previous is. twist. And one of the one of the big things there, Michael, is that he's designed expressly yes. as a parody of the relentless, badass, over the top, the Punisher. Get the job done, the Punisher. Take your pick. He's a great kind of design of that. Excellent. And he's hilarious. It's it's a pretty funny character. I, he's played. I have by... not seen much of that Ben because I was too busy watching Killjoys. Yes, you're too busy watching Killjoys, also on Amazon Prime. Is it? Uh, this podcast brought to you by Amazon Prime. Yeah, I think so. What was it? I think they spent their time buying up a lot of those properties oh. as they went along. Well, I had a few other ones there, Michael, um, that we didn't really get through. Right, go on. Uh, probably one of the most famous examples in a more updated, less Western version would be the Blade Runners, who are my personal favorites, Michael. Oh, yeah, we did even They're talk very about that. different type of, of mercenary where technically violence should be the last resort but the the replicants aren't going to go easy michael no no they're robots the replicants ain't going to give up no like so tears they kind of have all this thing one of the things that i think uh the 2018 film was 2018 is that when blade runner 2048 so, yeah. came out yeah the 2018 film did was that they entered into this kind of thing of of moral choices as you said michael and it was Largely inspired by the the very frowned upon practice of having a way, way back in the plantation days, Michael, you would have uh, certain black men who would track down their own kind. No, they no use. From plantations. And you would have uh, an equivalent of that from Native Americans who would teach uh, frontiersmen and things like that how to track and hunt their own kind, Michael. Uh, and t- Blade Runner 2048 took this trope this idea of the <laughs> it's Blade Runner 2049 Ben you've said that a couple of times <laughs> I said, oh sorry 2049 I don't know why I'm saying 2048 uh, Blade Runner 2049 takes that idea Michael and uses it as a an interesting parable for the replicants mm. because we find out that K is in fact a good old replicant we find it very early in the movie Ben and remember the the M. Um... The interesting thing about that was the trailers and the previews of the film did not give that away in any way. Yeah, and then it was like, oh. Holy moly, he's a replicant. bloody replicant the whole time. First five minutes. Yeah, first five minutes we found out. Very yeah. good. Good film. Very good film, Michael. And it's it's an interesting update on that. Like uh, the reluctant bounty hunter. The reluctant bounty hunter is one we didn't get to talk about, Michael. We'll talk about it next time. Yeah, well, reluctant me. Reluctant bounty hunter is a great trope. Yeah, me in the in the, in the the online MMO game Star Wars The Old Republic. <laughs> you, you were just the soft bounty hunter. I was the worst bounty hunter, Ben. I think it was a ginger lady as well. Of, co- of course it was. Yeah, of yeah. course it was. Yeah, Taking yeah. inspiration from Fireflies, Christina Hendricks. Did you know she was actually just a lowly con woman, Michael? I wouldn't say lowly. She was very good at it. But very she, good at but it. She definitely wasn't. The <laughs> All <best> right. <laughs> That's it from us for this week, ladies and gentlemen. We want to give a massive thank you to everybody who contributed to the Instagram and sent in a bunch of suggestions to us. It makes our research much, much easier. uh, And we can kind of play with different tropes and things like that. Did you enjoy this episode? Did we miss out on any of your favorite bounty hunter tropes or any of your favorite bounty hunty characters? Bounty hunty, I like it. Please do get in touch with us um, when... That's uh, what this sorry. episode is called, Ben. Bounty hunting characters. <laughs> Please do get in touch with us when uh, you find it convenient. You can find us in a number of different places. First of all, we're on the interwebs at www.seanrabiog.com. It means tiny room in Irish. And we're also on the L Instagram, if you prefer a more instant form of communication, at seanrabiog, S-E-O-M-R-A-B-E-A-G. Still means tiny room in Irish. Still means tiny room in Irish, sort of. Sort of. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, if you are listening to this on the L Apple podcast, Mm. give us a review. review. Five bloody stars. Five bloody stars, a -a ding-a-ling-ling-ling. What you will get for that lovely contribution to our ego and self-esteem is a massive thank you. Mm. uh, Because that's all we've got, really. That's all we've got. Um, We have to keep all the podcast money for ourselves, yeah. Yeah. So moving on from there, if you're listening to us on the L Spotify, do follow along. And if you know anybody who you think might enjoy this episode, or if you think everyone you know 
mm. would enjoy this episode, do share us in your Instagram story. It's a great way for people to listen and uh, get in touch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, if you're on anywhere else, uh, do give us a good review wherever you listen to us yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it for this week, ladies and gentlemen. No, it's uh, not, Ben. We have other things to talk about. Don't forget to tell them about collecting issues. Oh, yeah. I completely forgot to tell you about collecting issues. This very Wednesday, if you haven't had enough of our silky smooth voices and witty banter, you can find more of us with a little bit more of an academic tilt uh, as we look into <laughs> an excellent comic from <laughs> Boom Studios. We're going to be taking a look at Once and Future by That's Kieran Gillen and Dan Mora arguable um, the 2020 series yeah uh, collecting issues one to six of that very thing you can hear it on Wednesday if you have anything you'd like to talk to us about uh, on collecting issues and you have any comic book you'd like dissected you can get in touch with us uh, at all the places listed previously yep. and also yep. on our fancy shiny discord hop up on the discord yeah where you can have real time discussions yep. with a pair of plebs That's now us. Benjamin now Benjamin there is a, there's another slight situation we have at the moment where um, I don't know if you remember this conversation a while ago, but we were talking about poems a while ago. <laughs> and, I, and I said to you, Ben, Ben, I am absolutely fucking sick of listening to you talking about poems. If you want to talk about poems, why don't you just piss off and start your own podcast about poems? I bet you didn't think I'd do it, though. I, did, I did think you'd do it, Ben, because now if people want to listen to that, they can go to www.words.burnpodcast.something.com. Dot com. You're yeah, absolutely yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, you can also search for me on uh, everywhere. Words That Burn Podcast is pretty good for Instagram, the website. If you'd like to find me on Spotify, just type in Words That Burn. I'm in the process of getting verified by Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, so the best place to find me at the moment is either there or on YouTube. You can also Benjamin. find me on YouTube, yes. When I told you to piss off and start your own podcast, I really didn't expect you to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have told you to go fuck yourself and sat here waiting for your OnlyFans to start. (laughs) Oh, imagine the money we'd be making now. Pittance. That's it for most, ladies and gentlemen. Talk to you next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.